Hi everyone, Vince here. Uh, new to putting videos on YouTube, so this video may not be that great. And also uh, new as a uh, tarantula keeper, as a hobby. I ordered my first five tarantulas on Monday, October 24th of 2011. That was uh, just two days ago. Received them yesterday, so I've had them about 24 hours. Today's Wednesday, October 26th. And the reason I'm making this video and I'm going to make some subsequent ones is to kind of give you the perspective from a beginner uh, right on through as I, I learn to keep these and, and what to do with them and how to uh, transfer them all the things that are involved in taking care of tarantulas uh, there are a number of experts on YouTube that you can watch uh, John 3800 tons of good information there tarantula guy 1976 tons of good information there uh, you can watch those uh, guys' videos for expert tips. But I thought it would be nice for someone to just watch a beginner and, and chronicle what I've been doing and what I'm going to do. And maybe you'll learn from the mistakes I make and won't make them yourselves. And also, uh, maybe you'll learn from some of the good things I do that, that works and that'll save you some trouble too. So I bought my tarantulas from SwiftInverts.com. Uh, Kelly Swift. Fantastic job. If you uh, purchase uh, an order $20 or more, they throw in a free tarantula. So I ordered four and got a, a fifth tarantula for free. And the packaging was fantastic in a box. The box was insulated with styrofoam. There was a heat pack in there that kept it warm. Uh, they were packed in little vials, wrapped in uh, inside the vials were paper towels, moist paper towels. All the animals came out uh, healthy, active, lively. One of them was about an inch, one's about three quarters of an inch, and the other three are uh, a quarter inch each. Uh, I got two arboreals and three terrestrials, so uh, that means uh, two that uh, live in the trees and three that live on the ground. So behind me here in this wood cabinet is the housing I've made for my tarantulas. I'm keeping them in my basement, uh, which I'm up in New Hampshire, so it gets to be around 55 degrees down here, never lower than that even in the coldest of the winters, but that's too cold for the tarantulas really. Uh, so uh, this was an old computer cabinet, I've converted it, I've insulated it so that the heat stays in. On the bottom I have a, a space heater that's thermostatically controlled on the outside to keep the temperature uh, at, at the temperature the tarantulas like, so during the day I keep it around 78, at night around 72. The uh, heater, the space heater, tends to uh, dry out the air. So the, the air in the, uh, in the cabinet here is about 30% humidity, which is too low for most uh, tarantulas. But the actual enclosures that each tarantula are in, uh, kept the sub, I keep the substrate moist, uh, mist the sides of the container to keep the humidity inside those enclosures high, even though the air humidity is low. So that again, as a beginner, that's something I'm trying because I, I need the enclosure um, because my, my basement doesn't stay warm enough. So I'm going to try uh, doing that. Uh, the reason they're down in the basement is because uh, my wife is not a big fan of tarantulas. In fact, uh, I've wanted to get them for 23 years that I've been married. Uh, finally, she broke down and let me uh, get them. So if you have a husband or wife that is really dead set against it, don't give up. It uh, might take 23 years. Who knows? But uh, maybe eventually you'll get to to have the tarantulas. Um, but I'm going to show you in a minute. Uh, I'll open up the cabinet, show you the setup, and I'll show you uh, also um, the spiders that I have. Um, I'll try to get you the best shot I can. They're all spiderlings. I'll show you the containers I have them in. These are not uh, the standard containers, the vials that a lot of people had. I didn't have any of those. And I'll tell you about the first mistake I made. I've only had them 24 hours. made a mistake the first night. Uh, fortunately, uh, caught the mistake and was able to uh, correct it. So, and it might surprise you uh, what that mistake was. But let me, let me take you over there and show you the, the setup that I have. So here's the outside of the cabinet. And I've got a light mounted up there. You could just use any light that lets me see in pretty good when I open the cabinet because I've got no lighting in there. On the outside of the cabinet is my, my thermostat uh, that I got online that controls the temperature uh, inside the enclosure and I have the, the probe going in there. I have a cabinet next to it. I use some of these cabinet drawers for extra supplies. 
uh, that you can see, different containers to house them in. Uh, I have my substrates in another room. Uh, you can see that I've insulated here so that heat doesn't escape. There's a hole in the bottom that lets fresh air in and a hole in the top that lets the hot air escape so there's a good airflow. But now we'll let you look inside the cabinet. And as you look inside, up on the, the top shelf there, I have my 10-inch uh, tongs, my little paintbrush for directing the spiders. I have a container for crickets. It has about 25, 30 crickets in it. Uh, a little water uh, container that I can squeeze and it'll put water into the substrate. Uh, also, I have the 10-gallon tank that will eventually uh, house my one of my arboreals that I got. <clears throat> Excuse me, not using it right now, but I'm just storing it in there. Down below you see my space heater that's controlled by the thermostat. And then here you see kind of the unconventional containers I used. They're a Dunkin' Donuts iced coffee containers, the small ones. Uh, I should probably uh, get, be, be getting paid by Dunkin' Donuts for, for this ad, free advertising for them. Uh, but these are the containers I used. Hopefully they're not too, too big. Um, there's some concern about having too much space and whether... Uh, this, the uh, tarantulas can find their prey. So this is an experiment. Here's an example of I'm a beginner. I didn't have the vials. This is what I'm trying um, and we'll we'll see if it works. You'll learn as I learn whether this works or not. Uh, over the straw holes I taped each one because I don't want the spiders climbing up through there. Plus uh, the corners are very sharp. Don't want them to get impaled in there. I have uh, a thermometer and a hydrometer in here and like I said it, it, it ends up being around 30 to 40 percent humidity in the air so uh, you can see in these containers though you can see the humidity there you can see it on the side of the walls there so I do keep it uh, humid inside for them you try to keep that at 70 uh, percent or so but that's hard to tell because you really can't put a hydrometer in these individual ones so you just kind of watch the moisture uh, on the sides try not to have it uh, too damp in there so and anyone that watches these if you know more about this than I do which is likely if you're an expert watching it and you see anything I'm doing terribly wrong that's gonna harm my tarantulas I certainly uh, you know drop me a line let me know because I, I certainly don't want to do that um, so the first tarantula I got here is the uh, uh, Rocky Palma Bomi it's the Mexican fire leg and I think you can see him right back in there he's about a quarter of an inch and he's been pretty lively. Uh, I got a little burrow started with them. Uh, with him, I put a, I took a pencil and just pushed it about an inch down, and then put that little curled leaf over it. And he's been been using that. So that was one that I got. Uh, he's a terrestrial. Uh, now this arboreal that I got is the uh, Serio pagobis shote. I think is how it's pronounced. The Malaysian earth tiger. Now this is a this is going to be a beautiful spider. I'm excited about this one already has made some webs in there. Um, that's him right there. Might be kind of hard to to see him. There he is. Uh, he's going to be a beauty or she. Don't know which it is, but uh, ordered that one. And then the other, uh, another terrestrial that I got is the uh, Lassadora parahabana, which is the uh, Brazilian salmon spider. Now these get very large, uh, up to 10 inches. And he's been hiding a lot in his burrow. He is right in there. I don't know if you'll be able to spot him. He's right back in there. Let me just see if I can get a little more light on him. Bring this light down. Maybe you'll be able to, to see him back in there. He's back in the corner. Under, again, under the, the leaf. That's him there. Not going to come out real good, probably, but we'll get some shots later as he grows. But he's back in there. So that was uh, the third one. The fourth one that I purchased is the Acanthoscuria broccola hursti, the Brazilian white bandit. He's been, he was not very active at all um, when I when I got him last night, but he's been much more active. He's dug a pretty good burrow for himself. Um, I'll have to get up on top here to show you this. I'll take the lid off and show you him. 
bring him out here. Um, he's been moving around quite a bit. He's dug himself a nice little burrow. Started a burrow for him too. That's his abdomen sticking out and a couple of his legs there. So he's digging down in there. Um, tonight will be tonight will be the feeding night. My first time. I'll be feeding them uh, some of the crickets. The really tiny ones. I may kill the crickets first. Um, a lot of the experts say they will eat them that way, um, so probably try that. Uh, the, the two uh, bigger ones, uh, which are the uh, Acanthoscuria broccolihursti that came in at about an, an inch, and the uh, Cereopagobus shote, uh, those are both good size. Um, I'll feed them some of the small crickets live, so we'll get that. And then the one that I got for free uh, is in here. This is the uh, Heteroscrotera maculata or the ornamental baboon and he's kind of burrowed down too. He's an arboreal but he's kind of burrowed down in a little bit. I don't know if you'll be able to see uh, see his abdomen but it's right down at the base of this um, little stick there. That's him. He's tiny just a, a quarter of an inch. That's him right there. Again, we'll have a chance as time goes on to show you more, more of them. So this is my setup. Um, again, looking for any you know feedback that you you want to give uh, for what I could be doing better, or if I'm doing something really uh, stupid or dangerous. Um, I did mention that I made a mistake already uh, last night. I had just gotten them. I moved them. The moving went pretty pretty well. Moving them from uh, the little vials they were in into these containers had no problems. None of them got away. So. That went very, very well for me. Um, so I didn't have any problems there. So I went ahead and, and put air holes in each of the containers. Um, I put the smallest drill that I had to drill holes into the top of the containers. And I'm just going to show you the size holes that I, that I made here. <clears throat> uh, that's, the, that's the lid right there, and that's the size of the hole that I put in. So you can see those holes are not not very big at all and uh, I figured that would be fine so I put all my my tarantulas in each of their enclosures uh, with those size holes uh, you saw my HMAC there the uh, ornamental baboon that's in uh, that container there uh, he's a quarter inch I mean his abdomen and everything looks bigger than these holes well they were down here about four hours last night and I came down to check on them and as I look there's my HMAC sitting up here outside on the top of the lid, just outside one of these holes. Um, these lids go on very tight. They're sealed very well around here. So I know he didn't get out there. That means he crawled through one of these holes and was sitting up on top. And I'm really glad that I caught that. Um, I, experts had said they can fit through some pretty small holes, and I, I believe that. Um, but I didn't think they could fit through this small of a hole that I that I had here in this lid, but it did, and it was sitting up there. So I was able to uh, prod it. I was able to uh, get it to go down the side of the cup, take the lid off, get it to go back up the cup and go back in, and uh, was able to get it back in there. And uh, subsequently, I went through then and uh, got new lids and put these little pinholes in with a thumbtack. So. Uh, no way they can get out of there, and I put them in the side of the cup too to make sure I've got enough ventilation. Um, and anybody that has any expertise on that too, if they don't think that's enough ventilation, let me know. But that's about all the time I have for now. I'll try to do the feeding video tonight because uh, I don't see a lot of spiderling feeding videos on, on YouTube, but I'll try to put that on there tonight. And uh, thanks for watching. Stay tuned.